Oof. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Emery. Good to see you. Um, I'm so impressed that we're staying on time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Difficult. not easy. Very good uh, management. Yes. Oh, I'll say that again once Megan comes on. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no, I just said I'm so impressed that we're sticking to the schedule, right? That people are like, oh, look at all my friends here. Hi, good morning. I'm thrilled. I keep um, it, I keep kicking people off in the old sessions. I keep saying, just move, just move it along. Just That's it. it. Next time we are going to be sure to build in um, restroom breaks and coffee breaks. Um, we did not expect it to be of this size. So we are, we're thrilled. It's amazing. It's what a great way to start the day, right? Well, here we're starting the day and, and it's also just fun because yeah, we're hearing people, Love it. people's schedules. So yeah, good, good, good. Uh, hi, Brenda. Brenda, you look like awake and good to go. You do not look like a person in her PJs. I'm so impressed. Uh, you, you don't see past the camera. I get it. I get it still. Amen, Brenda. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kalu, I remember you. I, I'm going to tell you, I do from my, I think, oh. second year in Mallorca. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Maureen. It's good to see hi. you all. How are you? Great. I do not look fresh uh, like Brenda does. I look like it's uh, 10, 930 at night and uh, I should be in bed. <laughs> uh, where are a little early for from? bed, but not that far. I'm in Ch Zhengzhou, China. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I remember your TED Talk <laughs> in, in Mallorca. I, you came on. I'm like, I know her. Oh, it's so exciting. Great, great. Welcome. Hi, Yvonne. I see Wallace and Laura are joining. Hi. I'm so glad. Oh, I mean, look at this is a party. It's so nice. <laughs> really dress here, <laughs> right? Oh, no. This is great. I'll give people just another minute and then we will jump in. But wow. I say this whenever I present at a conference, whether it's, it's in Zoom or in person. I'm always like so relieved when people come. <laughs> I think I have a, a self-esteem issue because I am like, okay, good people are here. So thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. And um, and to, to keep up with Megan's uh, amazing organization, I will get us started. Um, and oh, good. We're already recording. Great. I'm so glad all of my professionalism has been recorded <laughs> thus far. Um, great. So what I'll do for everyone who's here is I am going to put a sign in sheet in the chat. And that sheet also has some links in it. So, um, so helpful, I think, to uh, to just open that up and yeah, and please, uh, Megan and I were just, we were just saying this, like, feel free if this is the moment when you need a, a coffee break or a bathroom break, you know, turn off your camera and then go take care of yourselves. Um, but I will get started because there's lots I can share and I'm excited to share. So let me just do one quick thing, which is I want to share my screen and show you the PowerPoint. So here we go. Sorry, I think everyone in my house must be doing screens at once. So hopefully I won't lose you. There we go, yay, okay. Here we go. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you again. Uh, I mentioned already this link in the chat. So if you would, please um, add your information there. And it's 30 minutes. And I'm a New Yorker. No, don't ever let go of that, even though I am a College of New Jersey <laughs> person. So my pace will likely be pretty quick. And you can ask me to slow down. It won't insult me. It will bring me back to reality. 
Um, what I'm going to do is what, well, let me just show you this. So this presentation is based on, um, I, I selected two contributors, one from each of the books that has recently been published in our teaching toolbox series. So I will share some of what our um, offsite graduate program teachers have contributed to this series and, and hopefully maybe get some people excited to become contributors so that um, some of the great strategies you're using in your schools, we can share them with others. Uh, so that's, that's the big overview I'm given there. And I'm going to start us in the way that I start all of my classes. I started doing this during Zoom and, and I do feel pretty strongly that we all need to take a moment. Many of us have likely been jumping from session to session. We had our fabulous opening and then, you know, I know I've just seen two great presentations. Um, so I think that it is helpful to take a moment and come into a space together. So to do that, I'm going to ask everyone, this will be a quickie, but I will ask everyone, just take a minute you can put your hands, uh, if you're seated, you know, put your hands on your thighs, either palms down, palms up. This is my favorite part. Roll your neck and your shoulders. I like to close my eyes. If you don't want to close your eyes, you can look, um, you know, about 45 degrees in front of you, whatever feels right for you. And we're just going to take a few breaths together. So we kind of take a moment, get centered again, and we just engage in this space together. So I'll count us down and you'll catch on, I promise. Three, two, one, breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. And now that you get the idea, we'll just do that two more times. Ready? Three, two, one, breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. We'll do this one more time. We're gonna breathe in some energy, some focus. And we'll breathe out anything that's distracting us or maybe making us a little anxious today. So here we go. Three, two, one, breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. You can open your eyes and come back to the space and my hope is that that just gives you a minute to, as I say, we, we're, we're here, let's engage together and stay focused for that, for the, the time that, the short time that we have together. Um, something else that I'm really mindful of doing is a, is a quick check-in. So I'm going to ask everyone to, you know, to be game here and join in the chat. So it is so loud. I don't know if you can hear the background noise as much as I do. Okay, good. <laughs> so in the chat, if you would, will you please just share three words to describe your experience so far today? That could be your experience. Hopefully it's your experience, you know, as part of the Global Ed Fest. Um, maybe there's stuff that's even more powerful than that going on in your morning or your afternoon. But yeah, three words. And let's just throw those into the chat. Well, I'm seeing great words already. Good, good, good. Invigorated, enriching, surprising, community, enthusiasm. We've had a lot of great positive words and thank you for being oh caffeinated yes uh, <laughs> we've got some really really great informative interesting fun yeah we want to have fun with what we're doing thank you thank you thank you um you know i i wanted to take the time as i said this is really um how i start my classes each 
each time I teach. Um, and funny enough, I had a student, I was conferencing with her and she said, you know, I, we all thought that breathing thing was really cheesy, but we, we, I, now I miss it. She's in the field. So we haven't been together as a class. So I, I want to say, you know, she, she was trying to be nice. Um, I want to say, I think that uh, it's often really important for us to just take a moment and think about where we are and what we're doing and get ourselves centered. And I, I feel even more strongly about that as I look at these fabulous words that you're all writing to describe your day so far. Because when I was getting ready to, to present, I looked up, I just did a quick Google search for what do teachers feel? And I found this image. I was like, ah, this is good. Because you'll see here, it, it's definitely more of a mix, right? The, all these different feelings we have in a day. But I did appreciate that generally in each row, you can find a positive emotion, right? Um, so if this were a bingo card, you know, you, you could still get something good within it. And really, um, the, the reasoning behind the book series that my colleague Jonathan Davis and I uh, have developed and, and the pieces that I'm going to share with you today, they really come back to this idea that we know that often teachers are feeling, unfortunately, if I flip back to this again, there sometimes the, the emotions aren't always positive, right? <laughs> that there is this big swirl and we want to provide a resource that hopefully gives teachers more of that positive, confident, um, you know, content, content and rewarding kind of feelings um, in this profession. That's what we want to feel because we're working really hard. So what we found is that often when our students come out of a program for education, and this is globally, that, that they're, they're strong, they've, they've taken in a lot of theory and they've taken in some, some um, strategies, but they're not necessarily feeling as confident as we'd like them to be feeling. And part of that we, we think is really knowing that that praxis of theory and strategies, you're really having a strong sense of confidence in using these strategies and knowing I wanna use this now and this is why. So we, we were looking for books with really user-friendly teacher strategies that we could share with our students. And we found that we just couldn't find a good fit. Um, you know, either there was there were books with some good strategies, but not so much the um, the reasoning behind why use this strategy or ideas for adapting the strategy for the classroom that you're actually in and not the you know perfect charter school where that strategy has been used <laughs> successfully. So when we when we found that we just we, we couldn't find the book we wanted. I love this Toni Morrison quote, right? If there's a book you really want to read, but it hasn't been written yet then you must write it. So Jonathan and I said, okay, we're gonna write this book. And then it turned into a book series because we found that we were um, finding so, so, so many things that we wanted to include and share with teachers. So um, you can see the other images here. This comes out of our own experiences. I used to teach at a high school for 15 years and now teaching here at TCNJ. And it also comes, for, comes from our desire. These are our kids and we want our teachers for our kids to be as wonderful and fabulous as, um, as they can be. So the, the way that this book has come together, or this book series has come together is that we have a process where we um, survey teachers. So, so far we've surveyed over 150 teachers. We've actually conducted interviews with over 30 of those teachers. They represent K-16, 18 states, six countries and counting um, because we have a book in draft form right now and a mix of settings, right? Urban, rural, suburban settings. And this actually came recently from an interview. I said to Margaret, who I interviewed the other day, um, you know, I'm taking your quote right now, I'm going to put it in this presentation I'm giving uh, in a few days because she said it's this, she is a, um, 
She's an elementary school teacher in Virginia. And after we had our interview uh, about a strategy that she uses in her classroom, her response was, it's so great to engage in a professional conversation without the pressure of being on an interview, like a job interview or debriefing after an observation. And we found that in putting together this book series where we're trying to share these strategies, a like a bonus of that has been how meaningful it's been for the people contributing to the series itself. So all of that, I, I think I sound a little like an infomercial, but all of that leads to me sharing two favorite strategies um, from an international perspective. And one is Adam Klempa, who just presented earlier this morning. He um, he had to jump off, he actually has family in, he lives in Paris, he has family in visiting. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to share some of what, what came away from, from his interview. And oops, I'm not gonna go to Adam yet. I'm gonna start with Jazz. Um, Jazz Abulez, who is in, she was in the, um, she was in Kuwait when we first started this interview process. And she talks about, group agreements. So we know that we want to have this positive classroom climate. So Jazz um, shared some of her approaches with her elementary school students. And you can see here just a very simple step-by-step -step overview of establishing group agreements. Here, I won't read the whole slide of, off to you, but I will um, share two things that I want to make sure I highlight. Um, one is stay positive, this idea of really stating expectations in the positive rather than you know, saying something like, don't speak without raising your hand, or it's not about the don'ts, it's about the do's and coming together as, as a classroom and agreeing on what, you know, what, what that positive classroom looks like. And then the second piece that I really want to um, make sure I highlight because this is Jazz's work is this beautiful image. Every year, Jazz comes up with an image that represents, um, represents her classroom and the image is a puzzle that the students actually put together. So it's this visual metaphor for how the students and the teacher are together as one. Um, so I think this is just such a beautiful, beautiful, again, visual metaphor. A few things to support this idea of group agreements. As I stated, you know, I think it's really important that we're putting these things in the positive. Um, so we're also going to consider, you know, Sometimes there are, there are moments where it's really tough to stick to an agreement. So we have this, what happens if, right? What happens if, right? A person speaks and it's not their turn, right? It's not the end of the world. What will we do? How will we positively move this forward? So this is one you know, resource that we've got going. And then um, we also, let me go. We also talk about this idea of, you know, sometimes we do this establishing these group agreements at the beginning of the year. And it's, you know, it's really nice and it's really aspirational. But unless we take the time to come back and say, how are we doing? <laughs> right? Those agreements start to lose their flavor and lose their value. So um, Jazz was really fantastic um, about just discussing this idea of coming back to that IB learner profile and talking about the concept of caring because she started to see that her students weren't really um, working. Oh. oh, my dog wants to join the presentation. Um, that her students weren't necessarily um, living that value. So, um, so they had a meeting, they talked about it. What does caring look like, right? They created a word cloud. Um, this was really just ways to have a, a, a touch point and, and bringing back to what they valued and what they had established together. So I, I do have a slide about, you know, I want to say how about you, but I think I'll share one more and then ask people to join in. Um, so what I'll do is jump into, this is a, a strategy from the second book in our series. And in this case, uh, definitely 
I think challenging all over the world right now is talking about current events. So um, I should mention that every, every strategy actually has two contributors. So we do our best to have um, two different grade levels that we synthesize and share. Um, so I'm highlighting Adam Klempa because he is an OGSP student, um, but we also had an elementary school teacher, I believe from Tennessee, if my memory serves, um, who also contributed to this chapter when we're looking at, you know, ways to connect through current events and talk about current events. So, you know, you can see some really important steps as far as, you know, just initially creating that safe space for respecting multiple perspectives, um, balanced sources, right? Really, um, I won't, again, I won't read this whole list, but I do want to, um, to, to share one of the things that, that came up as we um, investigated this and, and started to write up this strategy itself was, you know, the number seven and eight, right? Knowing when to keep going and knowing when to wrap up because we wanna give time to talk about current events. Um, we also, I, you know, we have curriculum, we have skills we wanna develop. Um, so when we can make the connection and, and have that be, you know, have, have that synergy, great. But then there are sometimes moments where we have to say, well, this is how much time we have for this. And, um, you know, the story that I'll share of Adams is that he, uses um, BBC World News, one minute news in his classroom. Now he teaches high school students and um, he will each day have the students watch that BBC one minute news. And he, he talks about this idea that, you know, it's, it's a pretty unbiased source as compared with now, now some of you have heard me tell this story about my, he's now 16, but when he was eight, my stepson Ben was looking at the TV and he said, oh, Mo, Mo, look at this, because he saw the, um, the logo for CBS. And he was like, you know, because fake news, like CBS. <laughs> um, so we think about what, what is a reliable, credible source. And I think that BBC News um, is a great choice. So Adam talks about this idea that each day he does give about five minutes, one minute to watch, four minutes to discuss. And if there's something that happens where he can't do this, students are really disappointed. They're really upset about this. Um, and another kind of rewarding piece to this is when he has um, parent night, he loves hearing that parents are saying, you know, my kid is coming home and talking about this, you know, is talking about events. So um, I share this with you. I share these two highlights of many wonderful strategies that, that we've been able to dig into and share um, to give you a little bit more of an idea of what we do as the authors of this series is not only do we synthesize from these you know, different perspectives uh, of grade level and location, we also think about how we can adapt these strategies for different types of learners. So we, we include a table that talks about different types of adaptations for English language learners, special ed students, gifted and talented students. And we also do a crosswalk of all different um, ways to adapt for different assets and needs. So in this case, uh, for, uh, for, for this particular topic, we're looking at, you know, how do you do this when you don't have a ton of time? Or what do you do when you have a day where you magically, I would like to have a day like this, I never do, but where you magically have a lot of time, how can you adapt for this? And in the same way, how can you adapt like, for cultural diversity, for students who are really comfortable talking about this and maybe students who are not so comfortable or, you know, getting in these different perspectives. So, now I can open it up. I, I really don't 
like to be that person who talks and talks and talks and talks. I'm much more used to getting a bit more feedback. So we talked about group agreements. We talked about you know, di discussing current events and just in general, what, what are some of the great strategies that you are proud of or that you've been using in your classrooms? Um, it's 8.54. I know we only have maybe two minutes, but I think there's value in trying to make sure we, we have a little interaction here. So I tried to make time for that and I will open it up to everyone. Thoughts, any strategies you're particularly proud of? This is a shameless try to get some contributors to. <clears throat> you can watch my wait time. <laughs> Maureen, I'd be happy to share one. Thank you, David. Um, I like to anchor key points in stories. My students really like it when I tell them a story about something that happened to me as a teacher, or I say, let me tell you about this, this uh, experience that a mother told me her, her child had or something like that. And then they can they can refer back to that. And it's not such, it doesn't feel like it's a correct answer, fact-based kind of exchange all of a sudden. Yes. Oh, thank you. David, what do you teach? Uh, I teach about special ed and disabilities. So. Great. Um, Great. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in? I know the clock is ticking. Well, as you think about this, I'm going to share a few things. One is if you look at the bottom of that sign-in page that we had at the, the start today, I can post it, I think. Again, let's see, unless I've cut and pasted something else. Um, so if you look at the bottom of that page, there are two links. One is if you want to visit the Build Your Teaching Toolbox um, website, you can learn more about the book series. Um, you can follow us on social media and hear you know, some more excerpts. But the biggest piece and the, the biggest um, kind of invite that I want to give is to ask you to please encourage you, whether it's you yourselves or fabulous teachers that you know, we're really eager to have um, a variety, particularly of K-12 teachers, um, contributing to this series and, and representing the great work that they do. So that second link at the bottom of that Google page is, uh, is a link to a contributor survey. So please, please, please feel free to share. Um, Again, I just, I, I really want to thank everyone for, um, for being part of this. I hope it didn't feel too much like an advertisement. This is not about me wanting to, you know, sell books or anything like that. This really is about, we, we really are so eager to, I guess I can go back to this and say, to, to build this community around international um, teaching and strategies that have really helped uh, I'll jump back. I'll really visually try to pull it all back together, you know, but, but we're, we're hoping to pull us back to all the good ones. Right. <laughs> so, um, so I hope that, that you can help us to do that. And thank you again for joining. Yay. And you've got two minutes, get a coffee, go to the bathroom for the next one. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks Maureen. Thanks. Thanks, Maureen. That was beautiful. Uh, thanks. Alan, I'm sorry I jumped off early, but I was setting this up, but I, I'm so, I'm going to be like obsessed now. I, I need to visit you and look at the, like just the visuals. It's not just the words, the visual. I, I just, yeah, we're going to talk. We'll have lunch or something. <laughs> Yay. Not right back. <laughs> All right. I'll see you.